This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. A large PC tear is noted at the fag end of emulsification with two fragments still in C2. How did I manage? Let's find out. Welcome back to another interesting case. This is a 60 year old gentleman who has got a long standing hypermature nuclear cataract. The other eye is pseudophagic and I operated on that eye about 6 to 7 years back. I'm not expecting any surprises. The plan is the usual, planning to do a vertical chop, divide the fragments and then emulsify each of them. As the nucleus is being divided and the fragments from the first heminucleus are being emulsified and the bag is getting emptied, I can still see the shimmering reflex of the distal posterior capsule here. So it looks alright. And once the half of the heminucleus is emulsified, I'm injecting OVD and trying to rotate the second heminucleus. At this point, I realize that something could be amiss, but still not very conclusive. There are three more fragments to be emulsified. The first fragment is emulsified. The other two fragments are somehow hidden. And as I try to catch one of these fragments, then this is the obvious sign. The epinuclear sheet, which is appearing as a membrane, is sticking probably to the posterior capsule and it is floating up now. So what this membrane is, I assume the epinucleus is sticking onto the posterior capsule and both these fragments are probably below the level of the posterior capsule. This is my initial suspicion. Visibility is not very clear. I can't really delineate what is posterior capsule, where is epinucleus. So just go back and inject dispersive OVD below the nucleus. With the same cannula, the two fragments which are attached to each other are levitated out of the capsular bag. As we can see that the second fragment has actually descended quite down. So the cannula is helpful in pulling the two fragments and I'm placing them above the iris and nudging them to the side so that I can see well now. Now is the time to really understand where is the tear, how big is the tear and it is going to be a challenge because there is an overlying sheet of epinucleus as well. I'm getting a faint idea that probably the distal half of the posterior capsule is still intact and this empty looking area is devoid of the posterior capsule. I'm expecting a large posterior capsule defect in the proximal half of it. As I am pushing in OVD, I take a pause and this is a time to reassess the situation and plan the next maneuvers. So in my head, I am thinking of three options now. Number one option would be to put in dispersive OVD and hope that it acts like an effective barrier and continue emulsifying these two fragments in the antechamber and then deal with the epinucleus by using a cutter or otherwise. Second option is to use the IOL scaffold technique popularized by Dr. Amara Garwal wherein I put in a multi-piece lens first and then emulsify these two fragments. The third option which I am contemplating also is to either enlarge this incision and extract these fragments manually or create a fresh small scleral tunnel and extract them manually. Well, I decided to go in with my first option wherein I am going to emulsify these fragments in the antechamber under the cover of dispersive OVD and the reason I chose this option is as I could see that the antihalote phase was still intact and the dispersive OVD would provide me adequate barrier and I could finish the job very fast. I didn't choose the IOL scaffold at this stage itself because removing the epinucleus under the intraocular lens could become a little bit tricky. That was my concern. 
So let's see how things go. Ovid is pushed in to provide adequate tamponade and I'm going to use the continuous torsion energy to emulsify this fragment in such a way that the turbulence is minimized to whatever extent is possible. My major worry at this point is the amount of endothelial damage it is going to cause since I'm very close to the endothelium during this emulsification process. The first piece is emulsified. Again, the OVDs are injected. The dispersive OVD goes in first, followed by HPMC underneath it. The second fragment is again uh, similarly emulsified. It's going to take some time because I'm going to be very slow and uh, gentle. That's it. The two fragments are emulsified quite safely. Time to visualize the area of the posicapsid defect. Again, OVD is pushed in to push away the epinucleus a little bit now. I am getting a fair idea about the extent of posterior capsule. And as I had imagined earlier, the proximal half of the posterior capsule is torn. So the planning is very clear now. I need to deal with the epinucleus and then I need to go ahead with a multi-piece lens instead of the originally planned single-piece hydrophobic IOL. At this point, I'm still certain that the antihaloid is still intact because if vitreous prolapse had happened, it would have definitely clogged my phaco tip and emulsification would not have been possible. Having said that, I'm still not going in with my bimanual IA to remove this epinucleus because epinucleus would be sticking onto the posterior capsule quite uh, strongly and in the process of pulling the epinucleus, I could end up rupturing the antihyloid and I could tug at the vitreous. Instead, I'm going in with my vitrector to deal with the epinucleus and also do a limited anti-vitrectomy. The loose epinucleus just flows out while the epinucleus which is sticking onto the posterior capsule has to be cut and aspirated by the vitrector. The posterior capsule is trimmed. The hands are switched and the lens fibers from the other quadrant are also taken care of. At this point it looks good and clean. Tramsonal acetate is again pushed in to just to confirm the absence of any vitreous remnant still. Time to implant the lens. I'm using sodium hyaluronate, the cohesive OVD, to create space between the iris and the capsule. The appropriately powered multi-piece lens is being loaded and the distal haptic is placed first above the anticapsule followed by the trailing haptic. The lens is dialed into the sulcus. I go back in with my vitrector under the lens to clear off all the OVD which would have gone into the vitreous cavity. At the same time, I am trying to visualize any remaining lens matter and try to aspirate with the cutter itself. The mode will be switched to cortex extraction and using the same cutter, I would be able to aspirate the remaining epinucleus or the cortex which is there. Uh, lens is dialed in position and the last bit of cortex is being attempted to be removed by using the bimanual INDA. The OVD in front is being irrigated out. The cohesive OVDs that is the sodium hyaluronate, they usually can be evacuated quite fast unlike the dispersive OVD. But some of the dispersive OVD which would have used in the initial part during emulsification would have still gone in and stuck at the angle. So it's, I'm trying to irrigate out as much of an OVD as possible out of the eye. With the irrigation handpiece in my left hand, I'm going in with a Sinsky hook to achieve optic capture. This is done just by tapping the optic back posteriorly so that it gets entrapped into the rexus margin. Ovalization of the rexus is indicative of this fact. The idea to have an optic capture is that it ensures permanent fixture of the lens and the long term centration is going to be excellent. In the meantime, I noticed some hidden cortex still and it is being aspirated out. If there is suspicion that the fibers are being too sticky, the best always is to switch to the vitrector. Again, I go back to my cutter to cut these fibers and then aspirate. Before closing, I would want to confirm the absence of any vitreous by using diluted tramsonic acetate one more time. Intracameral pilocarpine is also used to constrict the pupillary size so that I just don't miss on any vitreous strand. The side ports the main incisions are hydrated, intracameral antibiotics are placed and that's it, the case is done. Uh, mind you, this case was done entirely on topical anesthesia. Patient was extremely cooperative. The most common question which is asked is how do we manage a posterior capsule tear when the patient is on topical anesthesia? 
if you have a patient who is as cooperative as this just using additional intracameral anesthetic in between can really you know complete the procedure with just no injections at all but in the event of a patient being uncomfortable because the procedure is going to be taking some more time i would consider giving a posterior subtenance uh, 1 ml injection of lignocaine to just ease the patient's comfort but it was not required in this patient the patient was very cooperative and the entire process could be done under topical anesthesia with supplementation of intracameral anesthetic of course my post op protocol for managing these cases would be to add anti glaucoma medications in the form of topical drops for the first 3 uh, or 4 days because i expect the pressure to be high so this patient was started on a topical medications of brimoridin plus timolol and uh, i make it a point to measure the intraocular pressure on the first few days every day and this is the 24 hours later picture this is how the eye was looking the pressure was all right the anti glaucoma medications will be discontinued in a couple of days time whereas the steroid and the antibiotic drops would be continued the patient's vision acuity was fine and he was very happy it's mandatory to have a peripheral retinal examination done at about 2 to 3 weeks and that's what it will be done for this patient To conclude a few take home points whenever we have a situation where the posterior capsular tear has happened and the last one or two fragments are there and if there is no vitreous prolapse as of then one can use dispersive ovd to act like a barrier and then emulsify these fragments in the anterior chamber in a very controlled and slow manner the other option always is going to be using an iol scaffold technique and then emulsify them And lastly if you are inexperienced and you're not sure about this absolutely no shame in just creating a fresh scleral tunnel in the superior part or 90 degrees away from your clear corneal incision remove them manually and and then proceed as was done in this case that was it thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful